Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can clone your virtual machine if you want to have additional instances of them set up within VirtualBox on your computer. So specifically, I'm going to show you how to do it with Windows 10. And we're doing this now because we want to make sure that we clone our systems before we set up Active Directory. Why is that? Well, I found out that in the past that if we clone a system, specifically a Windows 10 PC after it's added to Active Directory, we have issues with Active Directory and we have to add and remove and do all sorts of different things with the computer accounts to get both the original and the cloned system back within Active Directory. So it's a little bit of additional legwork and it's a lot easier if we do it now. Now, why would we want to clone one of our virtual machines? Specifically, why would we want to clone our Windows 10 virtual PC? Well, if we wanted to tweak multiple different settings, you may find as you progress in this course, when we start talking about things such as organizational units and group policy objects and so forth, that you may want to have different settings assigned to different PCs or different user accounts logging into different PCs. It just allows you to experiment a bit more with more than one instance of a Windows 10 PC. And if your system is powerful enough, like mine, you can run Windows Server and you can run two instances of Windows 10 at the same time just by making sure that you allocate the correct amount of RAM and PC CPU cores to each specific virtual machine. So that allows us to play around with several different virtual machines than just two. Now, do you need more than one Windows 10? No, you don't. I think one single Windows 10 virtual machine is fine. But again, having more than one is nice as well. So for that reason, I'm going to show you how to go through this process. So what we can do is we'll highlight our Windows 10 machine and we can either hit this clone button here or we can go to machine and click clone here. And what it's going to do, it's going to by default call it Windows 10 clone. So it's just going to be the name of our system plus clone. I'm going to call it PC2. And what we're going to do now is we're going to check all the other settings in here. The path is perfectly fine for the MAC address policy. We want to tell it to generate a new MAC address because just like every device has to have a unique IP address on a network, every device has to also have a unique MAC address. We don't need to select either of these. Keep those the same. We'll click next. We want to do a full clone, not a linked clone. So we'll click next. And then we want to save our snapshots. So we're going to select everything. If we say only current state, then it's not going to include all of our snapshots. And we want to have those in place. So make sure you choose everything and then hit clone and allow it to start cloning. Now, in regards to how long the cloning process is going to take, it'll depend on your system. It could take 30 minutes, it could take an hour, it could take an hour and a half. One thing to note with this is that it's going to tell you eventually how long it's going to take, but it's wildly inaccurate. So this may say at the beginning, this is going to take two hours, but realistically on my system, it's probably only going to take around 20 minutes. So if you start this process, you walk away, you come back five minutes later and it says it's going to take two hours or an hour and a half. It's not going to take that long. The software is not accurate in regards to determining how long it's going to take. So just ignore that altogether. Now, while this is cloning, let's talk about why we would do this versus simply just reinstalling Windows 10. Well, with Windows Server 2016, the install process is pretty straightforward and basic. So I would say with Windows Server 2016, just install it from scratch. But with Windows 10, you'll notice that the process is a bit longer and there's a lot more things you have to click in regards to telling it if you want Cortana, if you want to allow uh, Microsoft to capture different analytics and so forth. So it takes a bit longer. This process just automates it because once we click this, we can just walk away and then when it's done, come back and boot it up. Now, see, you'll notice here, this says two hours and eight minutes. 
and I can guarantee you if I kept this video going for 10 minutes, in about 10 minutes, it'll probably say 20 minutes left or 10 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause the video, let this run, and then when it's done, this will automatically finish up and we'll see our new virtual PC over here on our list. And then what we have to do is we need to verify that the MAC address is different and then we also need to start up the machine and give it a different IP. Because if we don't give it a different IP address and we start both of these at the same time, there's going to be an IP address conflict on the network and only one of them is going to be allowed on the network with that IP and the other one is going to get what is called a Microsoft APIPA address, which is a different address on a different private class C network. So anyways, we'll let this run and just to show you, you'll notice that it went from over two hours now down to 30 minutes. So again, wildly inaccurate and it really doesn't take as long as what it says here. So I'm going to pause the video and when it's done, I'll be back. All right, so we're just about done. You'll notice that it says about seven more seconds. So we'll go ahead and we'll let this finish up. And I wanted to start the video now to show you how this finishes up the entire process rather than waiting until it's done. So while that is doing its thing, what I'm going to do is Bring this over here as well and show you that while this is saving that we have our Windows 10 system, we have a folder for our Windows Server 2016 and we have our Windows 10 PC2 and we have the hard drive, some information regarding it and all the snapshots as well. So everything is saved here. The machine is is ready and it's ready to, to go and, and be uh, set up and whatever last minute type of things that we need to do. And we talked about in regards to checking the MAC addresses and the IP addresses. So fully cloned and ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to check the MAC address and we actually don't need to check the MAC address to the original one. So we can go into here, even though we told it to give it a new MAC address, we can go to the network and for, we only have one network adapter enabled on this system go to advanced and we can simply click here and it's going to give it a new random MAC address. So if we hover over this, what it, it'll say is generates a new random MAC address. So every time I click this, it gives it a new MAC address. So that solves that issue. Now what I do wanna do is go to our original Windows 10 PC and we'll go to settings and we'll just change the name. We'll call it PC1. And that way we have Windows 10 PC1 and Windows 10 PC2. Now what we need to do is start this system up so I'm going to go ahead and start up the new clone system is we need to give it a new IP address. And what I'll actually do is I'm going to pause the video, let it boot up, and I'm going to boot both of them up. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so I've booted up both the machines and I've already loaded a command prompt and I've run an IP config on both of them. So on the left, we have Windows 10 PC2. On the right, we have Windows 10 PC1, our original PC. And you'll notice that I ran our IP config command. And what I want to point out is our IP address on both of them. So I'll go ahead and put a box around both of them. And I want to point out a couple of different things. And let's highlight them as well. So why in the world does Windows 10 PC1 have an auto configuration IPv4 address of 169.254.150.140. And why does Windows 10 PC2 have an IP address of 192.168.10.20? Well, it's because they both have the same IP address configured for them manually. However, they're both on the same internal network. And on that network, only one of them can have that IP address. So the one that booted up first was the Windows 10 PC2. And so I booted up Windows 10 PC one second. By the time it got off the network, the network said, no, you can't have the same IP address. Sorry, that's already taken. You can't use it. So this is called a Microsoft APIPA address, the auto configuration IP address. And this is a different class C network. So the way this is set up 
is set up to put this machine on a, a PIPA network instead. That's what Microsoft does. And we're not going to get into all the nuances and details of a PIPA. Um, if you want to learn more about it, just do a search for Microsoft a PIPA and you'll learn more about it. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our network settings for our clone system PC2. So we'll go down here, we'll go to open network settings, we'll go to ethernet, we'll go to change adapter options, we'll right click on ethernet, we'll go to properties, and we'll go to TCP IP version four, we'll go to properties, and we'll just simply change this to 25. Close it out, close it, and actually let's go back into ethernet. So I want to do a couple different things. So let's go back into change adapter options. Let's disable this and let's do the same thing over here. So we're going to open up our network settings. We'll go to ethernet, change adapter options, disable this one as well. So we're going to disable both of them. We'll enable it and we'll enable this one, put them back up on the network and let's close out all this stuff. And I'll do an up arrow. An up arrow is it, what it does. It goes through back through the history of the commands. So if you don't want to type it out, you can simply do the up arrow. And what you're going to find with these, and it's never a good idea to switch between two as you're doing commands. What you're going to find is now we have the proper IP addresses. So 192.168.10.20 is now showing up for PC1 and 192.168.10.25 is showing up for PC2. So anyways, that's going to conclude everything that we need to do. I just wanted to show you the last different things that we had to do, and I wanted to make sure that I showed you why we needed to change the IP address on these two different machines. So that's the entire process of cloning a Windows 10 PC. We actually could rename our Windows 10 PC2 within the operating system, but we're going to hold off on doing that uh, until we add these machines to Active Directory. And in fact, within this course, I'm not sure if we're actually going to use Windows 10 PC2. I may just leave that up to you to do on your own. Um, we may just focus on Windows 10 PC1, but we'll see as we progress in the course. So if you have any questions about cloning your system, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.